blood pressure. And in people, studies have shown that in people who are having a hard time, their blood pressure is just not coming down no matter how many medications they're on, no matter how many, how uh, much they reduce their salt intake, that sometimes it's a vitamin D deficiency that's the missing part of the puzzle. Vitamin D may also help to prevent both type 1 and type 2 diabetes, and we're going to talk about this in a little more detail. It may also help to improve blood sugar control in people who already have type 2 diabetes. It also alleviates symptoms of neuropathy. Neuropathy is some, something uh, that can happen uh, in people who have had diabetes for uh, several years. And those symptoms are pain, burning, tingling, numbness, throbbing. There was one study that showed, it was a small study, but it showed that vitamin D supplementation can actually alleviate some of those uh, painful symptoms associated with neuropathy. Vitamin D can reduce the risk of autoimmune diseases like multiple sclerosis and lupus. Vitamin D can reduce the risk of inflammatory diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and Crohn's disease. I'm not done. <laughs> Vitamin D may also strengthen the immune system. It can help us to um, uh, uh, have a stronger immune system so that we're not as likely to come down with the flu. It can help to prevent tuberculosis. It can help to improve mild depression, seasonal affective disorder, and mental functioning in adults. And the list could go on. The list could go on for several more slides, but I think you get the picture. <laughs> so ask your doctor if taking a pill to solve all your problems is right for you. Now, can one vitamin really do all these things? Is it really possible? Is there scientific evidence to support these claims, the claims that vitamin D can prevent or treat uh, or manage non-skeletal diseases like cancer, heart disease, diabetes, kidney disease, other conditions? Well, what I want to do is I just want to take a few slides to talk to you about the different kinds of scientific evidence, because I think this will really help you when you read these newspaper articles and magazine articles and the latest book that comes out on vitamin D will really help you to sort through and say, are these claims really well-founded? Is there really good evidence to support these claims? Um, when, when we read a newspaper article or something comes across our email and, you know, vitamin D is proven to reduce the risk of breast cancer, is that, it's probably a, a blown out of proportion. So there's different kinds of studies. Um, the first kind is called a randomized controlled trial. I'm not going to go into detail here, but just so that you understand, the randomized control trial is the kind of study that's considered the gold standard. When you see a, a study that's been designed using the randomized control trial study design, then you know that that's a strong study. That's, uh, that is where a group of people are taken um, or a group of people are uh, recruited and they are randomly assigned to either, let's say, take vitamin D or take a sugar pill or a placebo. And then those people, again, preferably a large group of people, are followed over several years, and then the researchers see what happened. Who got diabetes? Who didn't? Who got cancer? Who didn't? And they see, is there a statistically significant difference between those two groups? That's a randomized controlled trial. These other uh, study designs, uh, cohort study, case-controlled, cross-sectional, they are, they are weaker study designs. They're scientific studies. They're certainly valid. They certainly have their place. But as far as the ability to test causal relationships, cause and effect, does vitamin D prevent cancer? Does vitamin D uh, help to improve blood sugar control? The way to answer that question is with the randomized controlled trials. These other studies are what's known as observational studies, 
where people are just followed over time or researchers simply observed what happened. They didn't randomly assign people to one group versus another group. So just so that you have that kind of basic understanding, you're well ahead of the game when you start to read the information that you uh, find in the popular press. And most of the studies that are done on vitamin D are these observational studies, not the randomized controlled trials. Not to say that they don't have any value, but just to put it in perspective. Well, in the last year, there have been over 2,600 scientific studies published on vitamin D. We obviously are not going to go through all of them tonight. I'm just going to pick out a few uh, key studies. So let's look at uh, vitamin D and cancer. We'll talk about cancer. We'll talk about heart disease, uh, diabetes, and kidney disease. The 125 dihydroxyvitamin D, that's, the, again, the biologically active form, the hormone form of vitamin D, we know that that may reduce the risk of common cancers, especially uh, colon, prostate, and uh, breast cancer, because vitamin D is actually responsible for the regulation of about 200 genes in our body that are responsible for cell growth and differentiation, programmed cell death. Vitamin D may also prevent the transformation of normal cells into cancerous cells. So where you see at the top, this is normal cell, very nicely regulated cell growth. On the bottom is uncontrolled cell growth. And that's a very simplified explanation of what cancer is. And vitamin D helps to halt that. Vitamin D also curbs the growth of new uh, blood vessels. Now, if you think about it, the only way cancer cells can grow is if there's blood vessels feeding the cancer cells oxygen and nutrients. If those cancer cells don't have those blood vessels, they'll die off. They'll starve off. So vitamin D can help to curb the growth of those new blood vessels. So on a lot of different levels, it makes sense that vitamin D probably play, plays a role in the development and uh, progression of um, cancer and pre prevention of cancer. So just again, just to show you some key studies, there's one, this is a very interesting study on um, vitamin D and breast cancer that showed that uh, with vitamin D levels above 38 nanograms per mil, and just as a reference point, 30 is considered um, sufficient vitamin D level. So vitamin D levels of 38 or above, the women had 58% lower risk of breast cancer compared to those whose levels were less than 15, which would be deficient. Now, what does that mean? Does this mean that there's a cause and effect relationship between vitamin D and breast cancer? Does, uh, do higher vitamin D levels prevent breast cancer? Do lower vitamin D levels cause breast cancer? We don't know. We don't know because that was an observational study. It was not a randomized controlled trial. Low vitamin D levels, in fact, may simply be a marker for an unhealthy lifestyle. People who have lower vitamin D levels might not be out in the sun, taking walks, riding a bike, doing gardening, whatever you do outside. People with low vitamin D levels um, might be uh, more overweight. We know that um, vitamin D levels is related to body fat. The higher the body fat, the lower the vitamin D levels. So it could be that vitamin D levels in the blood is just a marker for an unhealthy lifestyle, not that the low vitamin D caused the increased risk of breast cancer. So we do need randomized control trials to establish that cause and effect relationship. And we have one, but just one. But it's an interesting one. Um, this is a randomized controlled trial of nearly 1,200 postmenopausal women uh, in those who took 1,100 units of vitamin D and about 1450 milligrams of calcium, they were 60% less likely to be diagnosed with uh, cancer, mostly breast, over the course of a four-year study. 
That's the kind of studies that you want to see. But it's only one study. So again, in science, we like to see rep replication of that. We like to see several studies pointing to the same kind of results before we can be sure that there's a cause and effect relationship. And not all studies show a protective effect when it comes to cancer. Some studies show what's called a U-shaped curve, meaning, um, for example, with prostate cancer, both at low levels of vitamin D in the blood and at high levels of vitamin D in the blood, there seems to be an association with an increase in prostate cancer. So there's a lot we still don't know. Some studies show a, an increased risk of cancer with higher vitamin D levels. So for example, among Finnish male smokers, those with the highest vitamin D levels had a threefold higher risk of developing pancreatic cancer. So There's clearly a lot that we still don't know. All right, skipping over to heart disease.